Hello. In this video, I want to focus on the new distribution Debian Bullseye. A couple of days ago, the new Debian 11 uh, version called Bullseye has been released, and it seems to be a very appropriate time to go ahead and rerun the previously code running. Just a video I posted uh, back in 2018. So how to create your own Debian distribution in 10 minutes with Bootstrap, the Bootstrap, which is exactly what we want to do. We want to follow the same repository. The code is agnostic. It's prepared to run on the latest version. And this is going to be a perfect example of how to help us build our own um, Debian live ISO image in about, I don't know, 400 minutes or so, uh, where, where we can actually have our own packages, our own name, and everything that we have. Uh, one of the things is we want to leverage on the same the demos get started. So let's go ahead and copy this and, and get the ball rolling. So the first thing I'm going to be running in a X Ubuntu machine is it's running in VirtualBox. This X Ubuntu machine is um, my my workspace, and we have to have some dependencies. So I'm going to create a folder. Let's change to this working directory. Uh, and let's get the file that we copied from the GitHub repository. Check permissions on execution mode. And uh, we need to say, we take a look to what files it does. It's just a bunch of wgets and change permissions, so nothing um, harmful from there. Always check your code when you download. Take a peek at the code, make sure it's not doing nothing on your strings, make sure you have access to all the code. It's always good practice. Now we don't get any surprises for some kind of trickery or hidden code here and there. Uh, it might not be expected or you might not want to have running. So it's always a good practice to um, make sure that uh, you get you know, all your code and you know. It's, uh, it's okay, uh, but you have to really at least do initial checkup on all those things, make sure that everything's everything's always fine. Uh, once we have all the files uh, downloaded, uh, it's going to change the permissions to uh, execute permissions. I'm not going to go in detail into this because, again, uh, this was actually in detail described in the previous video, so I'm just going to go finding fast through this process. But basically, it's a number set of scripts one to five that's going to let you help you with the build so once we have this ready um i'm going to go through those files we make sure the some things in the configuration files here we go so we have zero to five scripts the first one is just dependencies uh let's see do the pseudo zero one script i have a bunch of things installed already i have uh, all the dependencies installed so it's not going to really install anything because i've done it before in your case, it might be different. Again, I'm using the X Ubuntu version, but any modern uh, distribution, as long as it has the dependencies to work, it's instructing me to go ahead and run the second script. The second script, one of the things I want to highlight, I'm not going to save it, but it's actually running the latest stable. So that means bullseye in this case. If you wanted to run a previous version of Debian, just change that one to the previous version. It would just work. It would just fine. The other thing I want to point out is just complete which is actually tell me what is the distribution or name of the distribution, um, which is fine. Uh, I can call it Denos Bullseye if I want to configure, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. Uh, you can feel free to change anything you, you, you want in this screen. Make it, make it your distribution. And I want to modify this one at the very end. I want to just, I want to create a user. Which is the user is live. It's going to be programmatically created. And I want to change the live as a live password. You can change whatever user you want. I just don't have to do this. It's just, and I put it commented just for security at first. I don't want to make it enforce and anybody to have to leave because I want to make this public in SourceForge. Uh, I don't want to force anybody to actually leave with some of the live users or consider insecure. I'm giving fire in the hole on the script number two. Basically, what it does. Is the same thing that they that it happens on uh, 
distribution build or Linux from scratch is when I go ahead and start creating the base core system. And this core system is going to be, you, you start from a Linux distribution, you download and start copying files to your core system, then you shall root into your core system. From the, to your actual uh, neutral rooted core system, you start downloading again and compiling and relinking everything in your kernel to make it yours. Finally, you end up with a uh, kernel link to all those libraries that is going to make it bootable. Now, the only thing we're adding here is we're compressing all that result into a live CD and, and, and dump it into an ISO. Eventually, everything gets super compressed. It's going to be very impressive to see, I don't know, 400 megs um, into an ISO. And eventually, everything in a bootable, uh, lightweight format. Look at this. All these packages are exactly the same packages that you would install if you run through a Linux from scratch exercise. That's pretty cool. It, it's a lot faster. It's a lot nicer to see in a high level. But um, I have a previous video on Linux from scratch as well. It can help you basically build everything together. I haven't revisited that lately, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be the, the link and the code should be pretty close. It's another project in GitHub as well. But anyway, uh, right here you can see it's building the core system. Uh, this is going to be as fast as your internet access and your solid state drive is to download all those packages to put it on the core system and to get the things running in the right format, right? Uh, we're seeing how a lot of packages are going and moving forward and pretty kind of nice configuring the base system. Uh, it's going to be nice to see. As soon as this finish, we're going to be ending in a root environment. And since we edit the file number three, here we are. We can actually see that file that copy. So it's going to create a user live user. We can go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, fire and hole. Now, this script within the children environment is actually re downloading the actual the kernel and packages that it want to be using. It's using, the, as you can see, the Debian stable, which is good. What is the Debian stable? Bullseye. So eventually, this is going to download the Bullseye. Package system. The cool thing about this is very agnostic. As distribution go forward, the code does not get uh, obsolete or need to be updated. It can be agnostic from the distros as long as it will reference the stable. So eventually you can continue having your repositories uh, the ability to continue building. But if you wanted to do some specific distribution downgrade to a specific distribution, you can always go back and reference. That particular distribution to actually reference within the script. That's always a possibility as well. So right now it's um let's continue with the dev bootstrap process. It's actually uh, in this case generating the boot, they need a need our DNA image uh, it's actually good in our last pass and we can see that actually it worked in our uh, in the kernel, the BM Linux. Uh, it's actually working in the boot image as well. It's pretty cool. It's actually relinking everything already. Um, creating the, the file system devices. Um, it's pretty awesome because as soon as we finish, we're going to end it with a. Uh, that you have the ability to put your own root password. It's going to ask you for the locale. It's ask you to select US. Here we go. Now it's going to all the packages, actually get everything ready. FTP, US Debian, or stable. Actually, it's getting the same packages, but in the Debian package manager. Now the Debian package manager is for the manager for us. And this is just the waiting game. Uh, again, this depends on your internet connection speed and your bandwidth speed to see uh, how fast the result will be. Now, how could this be faster? Well, perhaps if you have a local uh, Debian. Uh, and you can change the reference from the URL what is getting this, maybe from the local uh, network, it definitely be a lot faster um, in case you have the need for installing multiple um, or generating multiple images. That'd be something that definitely speed up your process. You can just keep our seeing on the repositories from the Debian distribution. Other than that, it's just going to be for, for one time. It'd be just fine. Get there, give it a short run, and once it gets there, you want to be ending with your own. Live um, 
Linux distribution in an ISO format with your custom packages, with your custom installation, with your custom passwords, and with your custom, everything totally customized at your fingertips, which is really cool. Um, some packing is uh, maybe going a little bit slow, probably the, the, the downloads I know this is a little longer than expected, but uh, this is going to that. All the list of files that actually are listed, they're documented on the files, on the scripts. If you want to add some of the scripts, some of the packages, feel free just to edit some of the text files, and eventually you can just go ahead and um, give it a shot, right? Um, so you can actually add specifically customers. Now, if you this is the minimal version, if you there's another uh, scripts that actually done X, that's going to take a little longer. The window manager and uh, the um, the part of the whether you want to use GNOME or KDE, this is the part of the call. So I'm going to choose US English, and it's going to ask me next. It's going to ask me for a root password, which eventually uh, for this live image is going to be posted. Live user, live password. Root user, I typically just put Tor as a password, but of course, in a production environment, you put something more more secure, or or maybe even forced to change it the first time. I'm done with the script number three, so eventually we can give it a shot to script number four. Which actually, we want to make a squash image of all this. The root environment is ready to go, and the last point. Um, ISO file. This is for us image. It's almost like you get a, get a file system to actually kind of be compressed and condense everything. This might be probably one of the lengthiest part of the whole process on the build. Uh, again, it depends on your speed and your drive, but uh, once it jumps from 30 to 90, uh, everything goes really smooth. So right now, it's filling out file on home Dino's live boot because it was defined on the um, configuration file that we saw earlier. Image live file system twice. And this is going to be a similar path on the home Dino's live boot where it's going to allocate the result as the last uh, uh, script 05. So five scripts, um, pretty cool. It was really nice to see that the changes done make uh, the script really agnostic. And eventually, you get the ability to have your uh, script running regardless of the version of the distribution. But uh, it's really cool. Basically, we're just following, we're just downloading the files. Even if you download, you do not edit anything. You'll be able to download and just run it by yourself. Uh, and this should be uh, good. But um, right now, we're going to 18% of the build. It's coming together. It's going to jump really fast from 30 to 80 or something. This is going to be just the length is part right here. Um, it's just the nature that uh, the the build command takes. Right here, we're going to jump from 32 or something to what? Something crazy like 80 or 90. Here we go. Look at that. It jumped to 60, and now it's going to be just kind of putting the foot in the gas, 65. And so the next thing we know, we're going to be in about 80s or 90s. Look at that. It just goes 86, 89, 93. It just went there, just like that. So, last command is going to be 05. B, BIOS, UFE, ISO. We give it a shot. It's a lot faster. We're done. So, basically, we have a Denos B. And what I want to do here is when to um, copy. That file here on Linux B is all. And it copied it to the machine 37 SCP 50 64 77. I want to go ahead and create a virtual machine here. I'm going to call it uh, Linux Bulls I. It's going to be a Linux. It's going to be a Debian. I'm going to give it a 
So RAM, I don't need to, I can just do one. I don't want to create a hard drive. I just want to create this, this whole. So right now that I have it, um, I want to go ahead and do the settings. I'm going to go to storage. I want to assign the new build Dennis B and give it a shot. Start. Let's put this bill on the change CPU for two screens to 150%. Denos B Life will be the name from the config file, and you can change it to whatever you want it. Uh, once it boots, it's super fast. Uh, there it is. I can do live, and with the password, it works. And let's change the root. So it is fine. Strange page. It tells me that it's a Debian 5.10 kernel, which is really cool. Um, let's see, let's release. It's going to be GNU 11 Bullseye, which is great. Uh, I can see that um, version 5.10 of the kernel is pretty cool. He's using 47 megs of RAM, guys. 47 megs of RAM. Can you believe that? This is pretty amazing. The distribution is actually um, pretty lean. It's actually just using uh, those. Uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, let's see. Uh, 417 megs. Not a bad deal. Um, Up, up working. It's connecting to the Debian repository. It's reading the updates. Um, it is included. Um, the URL is included. So you get included. I mean, what else? That's for a minimum distribution right now for 400 megs running. That's a, a, a server. So, there you go, folks. Um, hopefully, you like the video. Um, that's a that's a pretty good um, that's a pretty good um, way to create your own Linux distribution with its own script. Enjoy, enjoy Linux. And be safe and have a great day. Hope you like it.